medical graduate and you're looking to go to the US for your observation and teleportation and eventually planning to do the residency there, then this video is for you. This video I have with me Pooja Bandhari who was my client and now a good friend and she is sharing her entire journey of right from overcoming the visa challenges to her experience of doing observation and research in the US to finally getting a match for a residency program. And Pooja is completely honest and detailed and candid and has tons and tons of useful information for you. So let's start right into it. So my name is Dr. Pooja Bhandari and uh, I am a, an income, incoming neurology resident at University of Mississippi Medical Resident. And uh, so I am here to share my experience about my whole US family journey and my process and everything that I had done so far. So I graduated from my medical college that is Shamsha Medical College Riva in 2020. And after that, I started preparing for US family. Basically, it has two steps, that is step one and step two. Uh, step one is an eight, eight hour long exam. Step two is a nine hour long exam. So you have to pass both these exams, that is mandatory for you. And after that, you have an occupational English test, that is OET. And so this combines like all these courses that get combined and your application is prepared. So I took like almost an year or so for the preparation of uh, both the exams like one year for step one, one year for step two and uh, one week for OET. So after that, applied for. So during my time during COVID, the B1, B2 visas were not very easily available. And uh, I heard that if you have research in your CV, so your CV gets a bit strong, like better than your other competitors. So that's why I thought to add research in my experience. And uh, for getting a research experience, you have to go there on a J-1 visa. So I applied at many places and uh, I got an interview from University in Buffalo. Uh, they interviewed many people and one of them was me. And after that, I got selected and for per year, they have two research fellow positions available. So after that, I uh, like after completing all of my exams, I went there on J-1 visa. People normally take very lightly our, uh, the personal statement as well as the interview preparation. People think that, okay, my vocabulary is good, I'm confident enough and my interview skills are good. So they go unprepared and that is something which really makes a big difference because during the interview, they don't ask you anything related to studies or medicine. They don't ask you nothing at anything at all. They just try to know you personally. They just try to see that does your personality match the speciality you're applying for and are you good as a person to work with? So that is the whole thing and for someone like Normally, any person expressing yourself completely in 15 to 20 minutes, it, it should like you, you should gain some kind of professional advice. Like with you also, I, I went like bluntly, right? The first time for visa that everyone told me that J1 visa and girl and Indian and doctor, no one rejects you, but I got rejected. <laughs> so then I came to you, I got your professional help and I got everything. And next time my interview went on very smoothly. The first time you went, what do you think? went wrong or rather what do you think you missed? So uh, first thing was uh, my biggest mistake was that I took it very lightly okay uh, but another thing uh, what went wrong it was my luck on that day because my friends like two or three friends who were doing this uh, research at the same position I discussed with both of them and exactly both of them had the same questions. They gave just vague answers that okay, I'm going on a research and this and that and I'll come back and they were done with their interview. So maybe my mistake was that I just, you know, relied on their experience. I thought that okay, everyone might be asking just this thing. Uh, the reason with me was like my, my luck was bad that uh, I had this Chinese officer there who I think knew too much about this whole process. So he asked me that, okay, so will you be doing residency or not and this and that and uh, why after MBBS you want to do residency. So I was not prepared for those answers. But after that, like when I contacted you, you uh, prepared me so well for like every aspect that could have been possible. Like after getting prepared with you, I was like, I can prepare anyone for J1 visa interviews now. <laughs> so, like, uh, a third person's point of view that uh, I wasn't able to convince that person that why am I doing research after MBBS. So like as you told, I found that kind of position in AIMS and something like that. And 
so that anyone will be convinced that okay i am too much religiously i am involved into research and i am by want to dedicate my life for research like i have prepared so much after that interview that even i was thinking for a time that okay i have to do research only in my life <laughs> You convinced yourself. <laughs> yeah, I convinced myself that research is the only thing that I want to do in my life now. <laughs> But yeah, you helped me a lot. You helped me a lot, like uh, the questions and everything, and uh, how you saw my bank accounts and statements. Like, okay, we should uh, like increase the uh, sum by at least two to three times what they are asking for to me. And uh, like that first session of two hours, and then half hour mock interview session. Like they were very helpful to me. And now also, like if someone comes to me, I tell them that you know, just don't go bluntly contact Shachi. She will prepare you. What time did you end? Did you sleep? How was it? Work started at nine thirty or ten, and uh, it took me like around half an hour to reach my place. So I woke up at seven thirty or eight. Then I caught my bus at nine a.m. I reached there at nine thirty. And uh, I was free from my research work at four fifteen, three forty five or four fifteen, something like that. So that's After a that, continuous shift. Is it like continuous? Nine yeah. So mostly, uh, so mostly, like we we look for patients that we can involve in our clinical trials. So we had the access to the electronic well medical records, the EMRs. So most of the days we used to like spend most of our time uh, searching for patients. Then we had uh, to call them. We had to introduce them to a study that okay, we are doing so such and such clinical trial. Are you interested in that? If they say yes, then we schedule a day for them. Then they came there. We took their consent, explained them the study, and then like different different studies had their different requirements. And uh, we the good part was that uh, we always knew that okay, four months later this person will be coming at this time. So it was not something very random. Like <laughs> like the clinical environment is not it was not something like that. Uh, we uh, ourselves scheduled the patient that okay. This person will be coming two weeks later at this time, so it was kind of that thing. It was not very hectic, uh, but as I said, the work at all the research places are completely different. Like you cannot say that okay, at uh, UB I am doing this, so at other places uh, I will be given the same work. Everywhere mm-hmm. the things are getting very different. Yeah. So what happened? PM, four PM, you finish your research and then. Yeah, your... I finished my research starting one or two months. I started studying for step three. uh but then i like could I, i wasn't in the mood of studying anymore like honestly if i wanted i could have given my step 3 very easily uh because when i went there in may so may june july august i studied very nicely and uh, i was in the position of giving step 3 at least in september but in august when the application process and rotations and uh, step 3 everything got combined so i chose my rotations and getting concentrated on application step 3 because step 3 was just an additional point step 3 is something that uh, the programs want you to complete before completing your residency it's not something mandatory that you have to give before applying but if you apply then they are uh, ha- they, they are happier because then they know that okay you won't be taking holidays during your residency to give step 3 so just that is one big point and also like you will be free before residency for step 3 <clears throat> so I started studying. I was in a good position, but when I gave a pause to step three, and I like uh, invested most of my time for applications and rotations and everything. After that, I could not start again. <laughs> so, like I like I used to procrastinate with myself that right? okay, I'm just opening the laptop, I'm just doing ten or fifteen questions a day. But then, like after one or two months, I was like, okay, just leave it. Let's just. Uh, I am very stressed out right now for my results. I cannot study. So yeah, if I would, if I wanted, I would have given step three. Otherwise, like because after like nine to four is done. After that, most of the time I used to spend with my friends. If I would have wanted, I would have given step three. But uh, somehow it just did not happen. <laughs> I also saw you travel quite a bit. So where all did you go in the US? <laughs> uh, so in US, like. Um, I almost searched, explored all the parts of Buffalo. So we okay. had Niagara Falls, just one and a half hour away from my place. So there we went two, three times. There were also like many places to eat and everything like that. And uh, so yeah, Buffalo completely I explored. And uh, Tennessee, I went one or two times. I have friends there. So yeah, Tennessee, I went and like around Tennessee also most of the places I visited. 
and uh, i wanted to visit nyc but i was waiting for a match result that okay i haven't done something right until now okay. that i that was your reward right yeah that was a kind of reward for me so like uh, like my friends there were like very supportive all the friends and uh, while i was giving my interviews there so like all the, those all were engineering friends uh, they were they were all doing their masters they had their graduation just yesterday so while like if i was giving my interviews they were like okay we'll be getting a job somewhere in new jersey or nyc and you will be getting matched so before you go to india you spend three days with us we will go and when i was like please don't make plans i mean even my result is not out yet so they were like no no we know you will get matched so like uh, all this support is kind of pretty very much important for you in this journey because this is something which is very long hard expensive and too much uncertain journey like most of the people that were with me in this medical thing in this usmd journey they were applying this time for the second time so this was very uncertain for me that okay will i be able to get matched in the first time or not and as i told you i had no plan b because uh, if i did not match either i had to continue there on my same visa or like same thing but affording one year more without getting paid it would it would have been like very difficult and if i did not continue my jeevan research thing then i would have to come back to my country for two years so like it was just do or die kind of situation like i had to get my journey out so yeah so after i got matched i was like okay now i'll be coming to nyc we will spend three days and i been following all your travel stories in us so yeah i saw that you went to new york too and yeah application process starts around june july like from that time you can look at the programs you can look at their profile and everything you like you can select the programs and uh, september like 28 september is the last date we have one month of window and uh, from 1st to 28th september you can like upload everything and your application gets completed and last date is 28th september people do like uh, like pe- like the best thing last date last date of application means that from 28th september the programs will start to review your your application there are people who upload it even later than 28th september but that is like kind of negative point because maximum programs have started looking at the applications and if you upload it after that they might not even just look at your profile okay so like that um after you apply to multiple programs and you apply based on what specialty you want uh for imgs that is international medical graduates basically what we have are internal medicine neurology pediatrics and family medicine like i'm not saying that and psychiatry like i'm not saying that we cannot apply to other specialties but surgical specialties are too much competitive for international students so basically these things are something like most of the img who apply for and amongst those uh, internal medicine is the most applied specialty by imgs especially okay so after that you when you whenever you apply to the programs then you wait for your interviews so uh, around like mid october something like that you get start to get your interviews and until december or january you you get your interviews like but i got my last in like i got my all the interviews that i received were were in october like after october i did not get any new interview and uh, then you start giving your interviews mainly in the months of november december and january and then in the month of march in the month of february before the result uh, you have this rank order list preparation so for example if i have interviewed at six programs so i will rank them accordingly to my choice like where where i want to get matched and the rank order this is something that you should be very careful about if you have like for example interviewed at harvard but you know if your profile is not so much strong so then it's stupidity to rank it at first position where you think where you want to match and also where you gave a good interview where like you feel your interviews were, were very strong and they will also rank you higher so be like there are multiple n number of criteria that you should keep in mind while you know the uh, ranking preparing preparing your rank order list so that way you prepare your rank order list and one program if they have for example 10 positions and they have interviewed 50 candidates so they will rank it 1 to 50 and there is a software which matches you to the program and in that software the applicants priority is like much more important than the program's priority so that way and then mid march first you get the result of either you have matched or not 
and after a week you get to know where you have matched so that one week is for the people who did not match like for example i got my result on 13th march that i matched people who did not match they can apply to there is a complete new set of application process that is called soap that is supplemental something something i don't remember the full uh, like full form so that that is kind of a supplemental application uh the programs that are uh, that have the seats unfilled like if a program has 10 seats and 3 seats are unfilled so that program enters into so so the people who have not matched they can see like which program has unfilled seats and they again apply they again inter- give their interview so people like some time after being unmatched in the first time in that one week's mean time uh, they can get matched through so and then uh, on the friday of that week like that like for me it was 17th march so you come to know that exactly where you have matched so this is the whole process for getting a residency that is the post graduation thing in us what are the things you did while you were in us which ensured that you know you at least had a good profile to begin with yeah so like after i completed my d step 1 and step 2 so i went to university at buffalo and uh, i was working on three or four clinical trials that time normally we just study about them so those clinical trials were something like uh, related to heart failure medicines which are not right now in the market but they will be released soon in uh, some of the coming years so i had a lot to speak about those those research at that time and uh, like since i i applied to neurology like my main aim was neurology so maximum of the rotations i did were in neurology uh if it would have been like one neurology or two neurology and two internal medicine so neurology people never give you interview if they feel that you are using neurology just as a backup option just because it you know uh, it is a branch where img supply but mainly if they see that if you if your application is directed towards medicine and you have applied to neurology too so they so then you won't get an interview so your application should be like directly directed towards the specialty that you want so my profile had like since i wanted neurology so i had four letter of recommendations of neurology i had a few Does that mean four rotations yeah yeah rotations you did right. four rotations in neurology yeah, yeah yeah i did that so simultaneously along with my research uh, before my research with work get started in a day sometime around 9:30 or 10 i used to go to the doctors that i rotated with uh, sometime around 7:30 or 8 in the morning and three or four hours i spent with them <clears throat> and if in the afternoon i got free a bit earlier so then i again went there so that way i completed one one month of time period with each of the faculties and then they gave me letter of recommendations so this way i completed so parallel, okay so parallel with your research program you were also doing four rotations one by yeah. one right so simultaneously i was like managing both i was actually running between the department that okay if something came up here i was here if something came up there a uh, good thing was that the people there were really understanding especially the people whom i was rotating with because uh, like based primarily i went there for research right so whenever my research people want me i have to be there doesn't matter whatever case i was involved with during my rotations right so the people with whom i rotated they were very understanding that if even in the middle of a case presentation or a patient examination if i was called that they were like supportive enough for me to let me go so that's why things like went down very smoothly i don't know that at other places this thing is allowed or not and uh, like most of the place most of the places they do allow but most of the places they uh they wanted okay you get done with your rotations first and then you can you know you do your research work something like that or either people divide their days at okay half of the week they are doing research half of the week they are doing this thing mm-hmm. rotations and if trying to just one specialty then you then you should have at least four rotations of that same specialty but even if not four but at least three should be there so like you said they're checking mainly your fit and your personality yeah. Yeah. What are so, the questions asked? Yeah. So there are like a list of questions that you can get like online anywhere. I cannot like disclose uh, exactly like this program asked me this question, but main what they ask is the first question at any interview is tell me about yourself. Okay. So that should have such an impact that okay in the first question itself they should get interested in you. 
it should not be just like a very vague and generic answer that okay i am from here i graduated from here and something like that that it should have something that you know like so that they can just raise their head and try to connect with you in some way right right and um, so tell me about yourself is one thing that everyone asks then they ask that why this speciality and like why are you specially applying to this speciality not to anything else and how to connect with this speciality and why our program okay so we just do like we are beggars in front of them right that, okay please give us a seat but we do not have to show it like that uh you have to go through like thoroughly through that program that will you be able to survive three or four years of your life at that place everything matters from the environment to the climate to the faculties people their cost of living everything you should take in mind and for that before any interview like one uh, night before the interview in the evening we have a kind of meet and greet session in that session all the current residents of that program and all the applicants are there in a zoom call and that time you can ask like any informal question that you should you want to know about the program like what is the availability of food in your city or like how do you transport and anything like a to z anything like that so all the, all these things like uh, whatever you find that okay we broadly apply everywhere they also know that everyone applies broadly everywhere but in every interview one or the like at least four or five people take your interview separately right so at least one person will ask you that why our program so you should target specific points for that program before every interview you should know that what is something about this university or community program that is very different from other places so so that they know that okay before giving interview this person has actually spent time on our website this person knows something which not everyone knows so something like that these things like impress them other than that they ask like um, like whenever you give them your cv right so you have publication so they uh, ask you to tell about explain about any case that you have written there or the clinical rotations that you did there so they ask you like okay when you were rotating at such and such place um, did you come across any interesting case that you would like to tell us about and the other part of questions is like personalized behavioral questions that okay what would you do in a situation um if you and your senior are not getting along nicely or if you have an argument with your senior or your junior or if you are getting too much stressed out or burnt out at your uh, workplace so how will you handle that how will you deal with a difficult patient and like think like that so they know that okay what is your answer in these things a uh, very plain and blunt answer does not impress them much but you have to prepare something in a way that is a little diff- bit different from them you should not bluntly like uh, say very big big things that anyone knows that okay she is lying but yeah uh, have honesty as well as a sense of you know professional touch in your answers so that are those things and like any interview which is going just in a question answer way that okay he is asking i am replying just you know just question answer question so that is not considered to be a good interview they should be like laughing with you smiling with you getting involved with you it should be kind of con- conversation rather than an interview so that is called to be like a good interview if you like you know we are here uh, discussing things with you they are getting interested in your life trying to get you know more so that is like after that you can okay say that okay this interview was pretty good rather than just question and answer that okay what do you do and i do this something like that people who are deciding between observership and between a g1 like a research program right yeah did you ever consider observership or how does one decide because both ultimately okay if the aim is to get into you know a residency program where you know that okay after two rotations have to get a recommendation letter so what is a better path does somebody go for observership and just do that or like what you did plan a longer stay and do both see i cannot give one exact answer for this thing but i can like tell what happens with both the things okay uh if you go for research uh, there will be just one thing in which you will be in a negative point that is uh, funding yourself for one year that's it and this j1 visa thing which i told you but it's not something that okay you like yeah if you are on a j1 research visa for like while you are applying so that time uh, this is something like like i explained that if you don't get matched you can just continue your visa 
at the same position and maximum people who go on a research and uh, they don't match either they continue on the same place or they get their ds2019 transferred they get their visa extended and they change their place but like i don't know any person who was doing a research and if he or she did not get married so he had to come back two years for us for, for india okay so this like i i am not aware of any any such person if somebody who is in research and did not get married they just continue there for one more year and 95% if you are continuing at the same place uh, they will pay you because already you are working there for one year and uh, they know that okay this person will be with us for another year so 95% chances are there that they will pay you so even if you pick you get like whatever payment you get at least you can uh, spend your life there like at your own expenses so just the thing is the expense that you like one year you have to be in the us i was lucky in the matter of fact that buffalo is a very cheap city uh, it's not uh, very expensive like nyc or chicago something like that the rental rates and everything are like pretty cheap because it's like the main thing there is university at buffalo so 90 80% population there is a student zone there okay so uh, if i would have been at a very much expensive place then it would have been a bigger problem uh, but uh, if you really want to target the university programs then you should have a research because while i was giving my interviews maximum of the people had a research experience most of them were in the us most of them were doing research uh i was also like too much afraid during that those interviews because i was doing my research in medicine and i was giving my interviews for neurology so people were doing like so complicated neurology researches i was like oh my god why will they even consider me who is doing a heart failure research and applying for neurology but i had my answer prepared all the interviews i got were university interviews uh mostly people uh, like get max like uh, if someone got eight interviews so at least five will be of community programs three will be of university or something like that uh someone who did not do research but if you have a research experience us based research experience so university program prefer you a lot these are some things that we can talk about j1 thing just the negative point is the expense and the two year thing which you have to like play around yourself and one year more flexibility you can come back on a b1 you have more flexibility essentially you can yeah. do come back go again exactly so i think b2 it's like if you go for a month for a play, uh, to a place for this rotation thing so you have to pay some something between 1000 to 1500 dollars to that doctor whom you are rotating that is their fee like an average fee from 1000 to 1500 so if you are lucky enough to get three or four rotations at the same place then it's good that you get one hospital you found four different doctors that you are rotating or attending so that you are rotating under so that is good but people uh, do not find that very easily so one time they like for one month they are in a city then they have to move to city b then they have to move to city c so that is kind of like headache on its own that you know you have to like after every single month you have to change your place and uh, no one gives you a room on rent for one month right uh so they have to be there in airbnb they, they like they, it's not a kind of settlement that you find for those three or four months until unless you don't find that like four rotations in the same city or at least nearby so that is one thing and um, then obviously you don't have that research experience uh i think to make the most out of b1 b2 visa is like whenever you are rotating at a place you should target that uh, i should publish at least one case report per rotation so that way your interview can become interesting by you know you have some stuff to talk about and also in your application you can see maximum publications like they they look at you like how many publications you have how much research you have done like what you have done other than studies it's kind of a different concept from india in india people like like people who are you know too much into studies but they don't like people who are just into studies they want you to be good in extra curricular thing they want you good to be like your personality wise or communication wise and uh, the co curricular activities like publishing your research and all those things they don't want to that you are just sitting at your home and just studying for step one step two so that is something uh, people should take into consideration that if you are going on b1 b2 visa at least try to make sure that first thing is build as much connections that you can if you are 
rotating at three or four different hospitals built such good relations with the attendings that you can make sure that okay this attending will get me an interview i have made such good relations with him or her in one month time and another thing is that try to do friendship with the current residents there even the residents have a say whom they want to be recommended for getting an interview and <clears throat> and the same way you can talk to the attendings or residents that you know i want to publish a case report in this uh, in this speciality so if you ever come across a very rare case or something like that please get me involved in it and like every case report has four or five authors so you can at least do the work which they are not free to do so not okay. you most out thank you so much thanks a lot enjoy the rest of your stay eat yeah. a lot of sleep yeah So I really hope that you found all the content in this video really useful, and this has given you clarity on how to approach and do this for yourself. Just like Pooja, if you want to work with me for your US visa process, then do get in touch. We can do a one-to-one -one session to frame your answers, to prepare you for an interview, and clear your doubts. You can take a mock session with me uh, to get a feel of the actual visa interview, and you can also look at our packages. So we have something called the full package, which covers a DS-160 interview, a one-to-one -one session, and a mock. The details for all of this is right below in the description box. We also have free resources, so you'll also find a question bank for all the observership interviews and a document checklist as well. So do give this a look, and I really hope that you enjoy this video. Please do comment below and let me know what you think. If you have more questions for Pooja, then you can also put it below in the comment section, and I can probably get her to answer them for you. So that's all for this video. Uh, thank you so much for watching, and stay tuned. More useful content coming your way. Signing off for now. Bye bye.